everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I am here today with a special, special guest. This is Sue Daly, and she's come all the way uh, from uh, across the pond, a big pond. That would be Australia. Australia. <laughs> yes, I knew that. <laughs> anyway, she's got some fun things to show us. I You've do. You've been busy. I have. I yeah. have, yeah. Well, let's see what you're doing. Okay, so I have a current fabric line out called Sweet Stems. And um, I just want to run through quickly about um, just some basics on English piecing, but talking about this new pattern called the Millie Bag. And it's a really simple pattern. There's a little bit of hand piecing and then some machine piecing to get it together quickly. So it's a really good bag to carry, you know, some of your things around when you're going traveling or going to your guild meetings or, you know, wherever you want to go really. So I actually think we should back up just a little bit because Sue is actually one of the foremost experts on English paper piecing and it's one of the things that I've found that, you know, as I've gotten older, especially, well, any, any age does it, but it's an awesome thing to, for your hands to do, you know, for my, you know, I love doing it. I love doing it in the car and it's so simple and easy and you guys know if I'm doing it, it is, it is just simple and easy. So uh, walk us through the basic steps of this, would you? Okay, so um, first of all, you've got to cut your fabric out. So normally- We well, do need some things, some We bits. do need some bits. So, bits and bobs. Uh, I work with a template. It has your quarter inch seam allowance on it. So that's for cutting your fabric. So you would put that on your rotating mat and you can cut around. The mat's great because you don't have to cut under your armpit, dance around the table. That's right. You can just <laughs> cut out. You know, I love mine. Of you. And, and the other thing I love is that it fits like right on my lap in the car. Absolutely. I seriously do it in the car. And I do I it, it on my lap in front of the TV, in yeah. the car, wherever you are. And then I use it also for, as my gluing surface. So it's like a stable table. Mm -hmm. And I use it for many, many things, including I've never heard it eating my dinner. Stable off table, it. that's pretty cool. Yeah. So. All right. So, so then you have a piece like yep. this that's a little bit bigger, cut out with so the. This is the. This template. is the piece we cut with the template. So it has your quarter inch seam allowance around it. Then we have our paper shapes that are already pre-cut. These have a silk coating both sides so that when we use the glue pen with it, it's really easy to pull the fabric back away when we remove the papers at the end. So we're just- And this is actually really genius, um, this gluing. Let's get over here so you can get this right in the middle here. Let's get right here. And this gluing is really genius because this is the one of the things that stopped me from paper piecing before was the fact that you had to baste everything. I felt like I was sewing it twice. So this takes that whole step out. Yeah, and then you had to unpick it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so when you, you know, you'd be covered in thread, the dog would be covered in thread. <laughs> the I used to go to the bakery and the girl would go, do you sew? And I'd go, do you How think? do you know? <laughs> So the glue thing is really good and it saves my preparation time by about 75%. Oh. So it's awesome. So when you're gluing, you've got to remember that less is more. So don't be colouring in all the edges. You just need a little glue on the side of your paper, just a wee bit in from the edge. Because if you put it too close to the edge here, what's going to happen is it'll gum it all up there. And when you go to sew it together, you will fold it up and put it in the cupboard and you won't ever sew it again. No, that's not true. It's just a little harder. Well, it when is it dries, harder, but it's harder. When it, when it dries, it's it's not too bad, but um, it is it is easier to do it, much easier. Absolutely. I don't think it gums anything up. Well, it doesn't gum it up, but it just makes it harder there. So it's uh, when you put your needle through, it's just yeah. stiff and it's hard on your fingers. So keep it away from the edge just a wee bit and just work with the I'm, edge of I'm your kind glue of a, I'm, I'm kind of a crazy gluer. I know. Yeah, she, I know. <laughs> She, I know. She gets on me about my gluing. I know. I've tried to remove your papers. <laughs> I feel like I'm putting up wallpaper when I glue it. One of those pieces yeah. on it's like, blah, blah, you know. So <laughs> I've, I've gotten very strong uh, sticking my needle through there. If but. that happens, all you need to do is <laughs> iron it with a steam iron that relaxes the glue so you can take it out. I know that because I've had to do some of yours. That I know, glued. right? <laughs> friends help friends. They do. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's put some glue on here. So keep it away from the very edge. Just fold it over. And I'm just going to work around. I put a tiny bit on the fabric, on the fabric. where I fold it over. The only bit, only on the bit that's folded over. Run it along the edge, fold it, and just continue around. And this is actually so relaxing to do. Like when you're in the in the car or at night watching TV. You know, we all need something for our hands to do while we're sitting watching television. Our yep. husbands are like, "Come sit with us," and we need something to do. And so this is, I exactly. love doing this. So there you have it. It's nice and flat. It all the um, points are quite sharp. Make sure you pull it in nice and tight because you don't want sloppy points. If you've got sloppy points, it's really hard. Well, to and the thing is, then it's, it's done. So then yep. you just keep doing them and you put them in a stack right. and you're ready to get on with your design then. I think one of the questions that a lot of people ask is 
will that stay like that? Oh gosh, And yes. you can just stack them away and come back a year later and they'll yeah. still wait for you. They, they're Don't they're very patient. Year. Yeah, they're very, very patient. <laughs> I'm just gonna move over and get that needle. So um, the one, there's a couple of things that I like to do is uh, I'm really particular about the type of needle I use. So I use a milliner's 11 or a milliner's 15. They're really fine, they're quite long. And the reason um, for using those is because a lot of people have problems with their hands. And you know, as we get older, we really should keep working with our hands because we need to keep moving them. It's like our body. We need to keep moving, otherwise we seize up, now, right? Let, let me just tell you, because I um, have a hard time keeping track of anything, um, I tend to grab any needle I find. Yep. And they are so much harder. Absolutely. Like instantly my hands will ache, yeah, which yeah. I didn't even think that was a thing. Yeah, it is a And thing. so now I have a little Ziploc bag that I put in with my stuff. Mm -hmm. And it has the needles and the glue and the thread and all some the clips, stuff. a little scissor, a little rotary cutter, my little template. Everything goes in yep. one little bag. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, and also the finer your needle, the finer your work's going to be. So when you... Um, if you use a big fat needle, you're going to get big fat stitches and it is much harder to get it through. And you tend to grab the edge of the card with a bigger needle too and that's why it's harder to sew. I do together. tend to bend my needles. Yeah, absolutely. Well, because they're so fine, they're so thin, they will yeah. bend. But the thing is, I think we're so used to holding a really, really short needle, you hang on to it we so tightly. We do hang on to it so We tight. need to just relax, seriously. Yeah. Like, okay, so that's actually fun. a really good key for me. That's a really good key because I do. I like grip that grip needle it. like, it's, well, like we, it's yeah. going to fly out of there. And we need to take care of our hands because I've learned with, with these needles, I'm really good with my right hand, but we also need to take care of the hand that we're holding the papers with. And I'm going to show you what I do to, to save your hands on that. So when we get our two pieces together, we're going to put them together like this and I just grab a quilting clip and I clip it away from where I'm going to sew. So I'm going to sew across here. I'll pop the quilting clip there right oh, away from so where smart. I am. So I'm always like clipping it, trying to clip it on yeah. the edge. No, and yeah, So that's so here. smart, yeah. And, the, and this is good because that's then going to save your other hand because if you're not gripping this like this, you're going to grip this like this mm -hmm. and then you're going to um, have problems with your wrist. Mm -hmm. So... If you pop that on there, I think it's a head thing and I think, okay, it's clipped together, it's not going to move, I'm good, I can relax. We have, we just pop a knot in the end of our thread, so just a normal knot, whether it be a quilter's knot or the one your mum taught you that was a lick and twist, but you know. The lick and twist. I do the lick and twist. The lick and twist. Yeah. That's it. My mum didn't teach me, but that's what I do. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to uh, just send my needle up through in between the card and the fabric right there, just to lose my knot into my seam allowance. Make sure. Should we move this? How can we see this Let's best? Put it over here, might be better. Do you think, is that better on the pink? Okay, we're gonna come in for a stitch. So we're just gonna take about two threads on this side and two threads on this side. And the reason for that is if you just take one thread, then it's a bit like um, drawn thread work. So if you pull one strand of thread out of your fabric, it'll pull out like drawn thread work. Um, and that's something that um, I know my mum used to do when I was little, but it will. And then what happens is your seams are really sloppy. Mm -hmm. So you need to grab a little, go a little deeper and it'll still just run across the top of the card mm -hmm. when you're sewing. So you, you take a stitch, pull I've never it actually through. counted the threads when I pull them through. I just pull a little, do a little stitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's about that. Just a tad Just about more. that. Just a little bit. Just a wee bit. Okay, so we just do the knicker knot. Um, we have a thread at the front. We've got two threads coming out of the needle at the back. We wrap it under, take it around to the left to the back, and these two will come forward under to the right and to the back. Now that sounds really convoluted. However, when you do it, it's really quick. You end up with a little figure eight knot and that will lock it off. The problem is people doing just two stitches, they think that's gonna hold it together. When you're working with Y seams, which is hexagons are, um, there's a lot of stress on the seam, so you need it to keep stay together. So the knicker knot is only at the beginning. And we've and actually done a video on that, haven't we? Oh, yeah, I think knot? we yeah. have, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And at the end, before you cut your thread. So, But just leave a little tail when you're cutting your thread. So I'm going to sew straight across. So when I'm sewing, I sew with my needle coming straight across. That's The shortest distance from here to here is straight across, so less likely to see your stitches on the other side. The thread I use is 100% a, is a polyester, not the one... Not like a poly cotton blend or anything, it's 100% 80 weight polyester. When you iron it, it doesn't go melt, it, you can iron it, so it, it's great. And it's very fine 
and it disappears into your fabric so you don't have to colour match mm -hmm. quite and as much. It, and it's not going to fall apart. Yeah, so it's just, if you use the right tools, everything's really simple. Um, it just She's makes so fast life, at this. <laughs> makes life really easy. And when you're using these, the fine needle and the fine thread, uh, when you open that seam up, you're not going to see those stitches on the right side. So you don't really even have to try. It just happens. No, I can, I can, I'm going to look for some right here. Good. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. You just go ahead and do that. You don't look, do at, that. look at this, you guys. This is pretty cool. You can't even see those little, little tiny stitches in there. And they were all sewn with the same color thread, so you won't. Okay. So when I get to the end there, I'm just going to do two stitches at the corner, which I've already done, and I'm going to just end it with a knicker knot. And basically the knicker knot, you know, she has uh, going one way and going the other. Basically, you just want to wrap those threads opposite ways, and, uh, and it makes that little figure eight knot. Absolutely. Because so I found I was having trouble following hers because I'm left-handed. Yeah. So mine were going the, the opposite direction, yeah. and I was working yeah. so hard, so it's just... Uh, just, uh, just do it opposite ways. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Left, right, right, mm -hmm. left, doesn't matter. So long as you get opposite. If you if you don't get the knot, it means you've wrapped it in the same direction. So yeah. you probably need to do that again. So there we have two pieces Perfect. together. So what we do with this particular bag is we sew is these so rows. So we do a row of five and then we do a row of six and they interlock like this. And then we do a row of five and a row of six and we sew them all together until we have the required amount around the outside. So when we sew, we start sewing them together in rows like this. So you're doing Y seams, but when you're folding these, when you're sewing these, you're basically just folding it, sewing it, refolding yeah, it. Yeah, it's not a Y seam. It's a, it's a, it's, you get to, you, yeah, you get it's not all a the way true across. Y seam. Yeah. You, you, you're doing Y seams, but it's not how you would normally do mm -hmm. it. You and just it's fold really them and simple. sew. And it's don't just be straight afraid. lines all the don't time. Don't be afraid to crunch, crunch it up in your hands. Yeah. So once you've got all of that around there, then you can follow the instructions to put that together. It's very easy. The last thing that goes on is yeah, the face. Is the, this little pattern right here. Yeah, and it comes with all your papers and your template as well to complete the, the whole bag. Super cute. Yeah. So I just I want to show one thing because people ask about um, taking the papers out. So once you've done this and you follow the instructions and it'll tell you when to take the papers out, I always iron it first, take the papers out and then I give it another press and it'll, then you'll trim it up to whatever size it needs to be. But um, lots of people want to know how to get the paper out mm -hmm. because, you know, um, some people think it stays You're be in. You're going to how easy that is. Yeah. So just flip back the edge, get your thumb in and rip it out like a Band-Aid. I just call it the Band-Aid effect. Yeah. Um, and anytime I'm, you've sewn your, your pieces to both sides, mm -hmm. you can take that yeah. middle piece out. So I can take three out through the middle there. Mm -hmm. I've taken two out. I can take the three out there because I'm surrounded there. So once you're surrounding something, you can take the thing in the middle out, which makes it easier in your hands. And, and of course, you guys up. know this is a super versatile shape. So Absolutely. there's like tons yeah. of things you can do with this. And it's, it's a really good, um, if you're really a bit apprehensive about doing paper piecing, the one in Texagon is really the go-to oh, for the beginners. Oh, it's a great place to start. Yeah. yeah. Start, I mean. However, having said that, nothing is any harder than doing no. that. No, that's really Everything true. Everything is just a different shape and you're sewing it together and it marries together like a jigsaw. If yeah, it goes absolutely. together as a paper, it will sew together. So um, so that's basically it's how we beautiful. put that bag together. The base is just has a um, just a little binding on it. Mm -hmm. um, the fabric line I said before was Sweet Stems, which is the current line. I have a bunch of stuff um, that we've done with this. We have the Sweetwater quilt on the back. It's made with our lozenges six pointed stars and um what else do we have in there lozenges six i don't know stars. but remember you guys when you see something like this just dissect it because this is a little straight piece that is sewn with just a straight line to this piece i mean it's just all straight piece sewing a little piece at a time and it gets bigger and bigger so don't be afraid of something like this because it is just one little seam at a time and yeah. it's just super easy. I think people get a little daunted when they see that and they go I never can do that however what fun. I've just done is as hard as it gets it doesn't That's get right. any harder than that. It's perfect. So, um, there's a couple of other things I think we might just fluff them out a little bit just to give some the people a little bit of an now, idea. Now just a sec. Done. Do, do we want to do a whole separate segment where we show all the quilts from this or do we want them in this video? Yeah, this is all one line. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's see these quilts. All right, you, can we move that just out of the way a little sure, bit? Sure, sure. Excellent. So this one actually isn't paper pieced. This is hand pieced or machine pieced. 
Wow, so you're out of the box. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going back to my roots, really. This is kind of where it all started. Because I kind of mix up my stuff. I'll do English piecing with applique or traditional hand piecing, or I might add some embroidery to it. It just adds another element to it. So this is one of the patterns out of my um, classics collection. Um, so it's just a template set. And what's it called? It's called... Oh, I hate I it when forget. that happens. I hate that. <laughs> Savannah, I think. Savannah, that's it. Oh, Savannah. very good. Got I'm glad it. you recall that. That happens to all of us all the time, so that's no big deal. Oh, well, I, ha I think it happens to me more often than most. Well, the older we get, the more it happens. Let's face it. This is another quilt, oh, it's and beautiful. it's... Let's go ahead and unfold it. Now, we did. I did a trio of quilts that all had the same shape. So this quilt has the same shapes as the one on the back. But why I did that was so that people could see that when you put them together in different uh, combinations, they look very different. Oh, and, gosh, um, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. So it has some little six-pointed stars in there. And again, I made a third one. So these are a limited edition um, uh, quilt, uh, quilt patterns. And again, exactly the same pieces. Except... Oh, I love this one. This one is so easy on the yeah. eye. So you're just really making your little um, hexagon flowers mm -hmm. here and then um, and making this section and then you sew them all together. Yeah. So you're just making little blocks and then putting them together. That's and, really pretty. Yeah. So they're the same shape, but it just gives a really And I love that you use the hexagon. This makes the back, actually it looks like the background, but it's actually Absolutely. a block in and yeah. of itself. Yeah. yeah, Very nice. Okay, so this one is a really simple quilt for the beginner. Um, if, it, if everything feels, you, if you're feeling a bit daunted about it or, you know, not sure whether you want to give it a go. Oh, they're hanging baskets. They are. So basically this is just a four inch round of Dresden and I've made a half a Dresden and then I've appliqued it down and then cut the um, the big flowers out of the print and oh, applied so that down smart. onto the top of that. And we've just got a bias strip handle and a bias strip hanging. Um, really cute. And the thing. backgrounds are just gorgeous. Yeah. Love so, those low lights. Um, I like to use backgrounds that not all the time, but a lot of the time I use, I like to use low volume backgrounds because mm -hmm. I think it gives your quilt a little bit more movement. And so it just Beautiful. Yeah, looks cute. Um, this oh, is just a wee mini. A little tiny. This is called. Did you hear that? A wee mini. How cute is that? <laughs> <laughs> that makes it even cuter. It's a wee mini. A wee mini. Uh, this is sweet uh, Swiss willow. It's called. So um, lots of miniature quilts around. They're trending really heavily around all over the world, really. So this is our um, Dresden flower. So this is the small Dresden flower in the middle, and then surrounded by the bigger Dresden flower. And then there's hexagons, one-inch hexagons in around the outside of that. But the good thing about this pattern is you can put a six-pointed star where the hexagons are. You can put a kite shape in there. There's other things you can add to this to make it very different. So remember, you guys, because a lot of times when people see things and they're small, they think, oh, this is harder. Mm -hmm. It's not harder. It's yeah. just smaller. Yeah. And these little Dresdens are darling. And I It's think just less, less sewing. That's right. And I think the thing is that people think the bigger the shape, the easier it is to do. But I don't agree with that. I think if I'm going to start somebody out, I'll start them with something sort of medium shape, about the size of a one inch hexagon, get them started on that. If you go smaller in size, you tend never go back to the larger sizes. It's oh, just a thing because it's yeah. the smaller size is easier in your hands. We have well. one more over here. And this is a really cute, this, oh, this is, is a bit so, of whimsical. This stuff is so popular right now. This is a cactus quilt. Succulents, look at that. And that was inspired by a trip through Death Valley. Oh, but very cool. all the little pots are the same and then a different sort of um, ca uh, cactus or succulent in each one. But that is absolutely this is really, darling. really cute. Isn't yeah. this so cute? Yeah. So, yeah, wow. I love this one. Lots of stuff for this line. Absolutely, there is. And uh, it's a beautiful line and I know it's in store, in down in one of your stores. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for joining us, Sue. Thanks for having me, Jenny. It's always a pleasure to be here at Missouri oh, Star Club. so fun Club to have you. And we do get into a bit of mischief when we're together. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Just a bit. We do. Anyway, this is a lot of information, a lot of fun things we learned today. I hope you guys give it a try because it is just so much fun. We loved learning about this as well. And we hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.